Hi guys, yep, I'm, I'm Mark from Melbourne. Um, we, uh, most of my clients that I work with are um, small to medium businesses where the people who uh, actually own the business are in there running it as well. Um, we have um, businesses that are up to about 500 people or so um, where they've got managers in place and so forth, but there's still people who are there every day um, working in the business and at the end of the day, they're the one who has a family at home and they've uh, uh, basically most of the time spending too much time away from their family and stressing out about the business all of the time and uh, what uh, I want to do is uh, get them away from that and get them to a point where they can spend more time doing what they actually want to do and um, uh, being able to work on the business rather than in the business on a day-to-day -day basis and uh, be able to take the opportunity to spend time with family, friends and so forth, which unfortunately for many small business owners is not the case. <clears throat> and so basically what happens, you have a new client who comes in, they've got a website that's sort of crap and not doing anything really good for them, um, or they're wanting to take their business or their idea online. And um, what uh, we sort of get in most of our cases, we'll have um, people who are trying to minimise cost and uh, Joomla is a good uh, solution for them because they can do all of their own updating and stuff like that. And they're a bit of a DIY type person. Um, so once the website's built, a lot of the time they uh, try and do everything by themselves. And because their expertise is doing something else, um, they don't end up getting as much out of the website and their online presence as they should be able to. And uh, then there's other people right at the other end of the spectrum who basically say, I want a website, you go and look after it and make sure and try and make sure that it works all right. Um, regardless of um, what group of people um, you're talking to about their website, um, I think that uh, you should give them an option to be able to spend more money with your business. And the reason they want to spend more money with your business is because you make them more money. So it's a win-win. Um, and some of the DIY people who, when they first come and talk to you, say, I just want to keep my costs down as much as possible, but I still want a website, will actually go part way of the journey along, you, along with you to um, be able to get more money, um, be more successful, and along along the way, on that part of the journey, because they're engaging you to help them to do it, your company ends up making more money as well, which is a good thing. You give them money, and they give you some of it. <clears throat> now, why I'm what I'm going to cover today is um, the why, how, and what you can do to be able to do this with your clients. One of the really important things um, right at the start is debugging your clients. And the debugging of your clients is not just working out what they want on their website and what their website can do, getting functionality, functionality, working out what extensions it is and doing up a nice pretty wireframe and putting it online. What it actually is, is you've got your one thing up at the top here, which is the business success and what their business goals are. And that's generally what the client will come to come to you with. They'll say, this is what I'm wanting to do. And um, a lot of the time, that's it. People go off, build the website and say, yep, there you go, that's done. Um, what we try and do is uh, we also try and work out the, uh, the owners and the, and the uh, lead people in the business. We try and work out what their personal goals are as well and what they're actually passionate about. Now, if someone's selling shoes, they can say, yes, I'm passionate about selling shoes. That's not actually what they're passionate about, even if they're second, third generation selling shoes or something like that. What they're actually passionate about is helping the people who come into the store. And a lot of, a lot of people um, will have a similar type of thing where what are you actually passionate about with what you're doing? And what it is is engaging with other people and helping other people. 
And that's a very common thing, but, the th but most people don't actually realize that that's what they're actually after. And that's where you can get to a real ultimate goal. And the ultimate goal for people might be, well, I'm actually really passionate about helping kids who are underprivileged. And so they're working every day in a shoe store. They uh, realize that you know, I'm not actually passionate about shoes themselves. I'm passionate about helping people that are looking after shoes. I want to also help out um, um, underprivileged children. So what they can do, and what we set up as one of their goals, is that they've got time and a number of processes to put in place where they can not only um, help people more with the shoes, and it's a, it's a really, it doesn't matter what subject it is, but they can help people more with the shoes and what they're doing and selecting that type of thing, and it's a dull subject. Um, but what they can also do is then try and work on a program so that they can give shoes to underprivileged children, or they can go and approach um, uh, not-for-profit organisations where they can spend time helping them do things, whether it's business development, whether it's personal development, no matter what it is. It, it help that we, we set that in place outside of their website and say, what we're going to do with your website is build your expertise and give you an outreach through your online solutions to be able to start pursuing that side of your life as well, which will make them feel good inside, make them happy, and give some personal fulfillment. To be able to do this with a client, it's not really something that's possible on a month-to-month -month contract, so it's not a sign up for 30 days and if you're unhappy, you get your money back type of thing. Because life doesn't change that quickly. You don't reach your successes and goals in that amount of time. And what you'll find um, in the same way that you do with an SEO campaign, you start off here at the start, you move your way across, and generally you don't see any results in the first couple of months. And then all of a sudden it starts going up. So if you've um, worked out uh, everything correctly with your client at the start and debugged them and worked out what their goals are for their business personally, everything else like that, you should see you know, within four, five, six months, they'll start seeing that they're getting uh, closer to those goals and that their partnership with you is getting stronger and they rely on you more. And it's a, it's, a, it's a really great way um, to be able to get your clients to commit to that long-term relationship and actually take you in as part of their business and their lives as well. So when you start talking to your clients about this, some of them will say, no, nah, no, nah, not interested, that's fine. Other clients will say, yes, I can really see how if I pursue these things and we lead towards them, it's actually gonna give me benefit more benefit than what it'll cost. And that's what it is. You're charging them for your time and for the coaching. So in the end result, they have to make more than you're charging. Preferably quite a lot more, because that'll make them happy. One of the things, once, once they've said, yes, we're going to do this, um, one of the most important things is that there's absolute clarity between both the person who's doing it, yourselves, and the client. If there's not 100% clarity with exactly where you're going, you can get lost along the way. Because it's a long-term relationship that you're having with your client, and you've worked out what their end goals are, as well as the course to get there, you have to have a bit more of an open view from just the immediate market that the um, client's operating in, but also what their future market's going to be. Um, the example from before was a, f a future market where they're going out and they're working for not-for-profits not for profits and for kids and how they can leverage that to be able to promote their business as well because everyone wants to work wants to you know buy stuff and work with people who are doing good things in the community so not only are they feeling good we're then promoting that back into the business and people are saying well these are good people because they're doing this type of thing therefore we'll go and buy from these people instead of the people over here who don't do any of that type of thing. So we're leveraging off 
every part in the, in the uh, map there. <clears throat> One of the very important things when, you, when you're working with your clients and, uh, and also with yourselves online and so forth is packaging up um, all of the products and services and also packaging up the client as a personal um, uh, uh, product to be able to then support the business, which is really good if they're going out and doing stuff in the community and supporting, supporting uh, not-for-profits and so forth. Once you've got that all packaged up, um, it makes it a lot easier to sell and measure. And with the measuring, you've got to get relevant, quantifiable, and measure key performance indicators and goals. Because if you're not measuring it, and you can't see where you're getting there, and you can't see whether you're being successful in doing it, then the client won't engage you for a long point in time and won't be as happy. So what you have to do is to get those measurements in place and make sure that you can see what you're doing each month and where, what's being successful and what's not being successful. Because the, everything in life is based around relationships, um, you've got your relationship with your client that you're uh, developing all the time, but you've also got the relationships that they're going to build with their clients and have a strategy in place where they can keep growing that relationship with their clients and whether that be through email marketing, promotions, um, speaking about what they are doing to help other people and so forth. They've got to keep pushing that and you've also got the acquisition strategy. Um, then once you've worked out all this type of thing, you develop a program of tasks and schedules to get done on a monthly basis. And I, I'd say with my clients that you meet every month and you catch up on what you've done, what you haven't done. One of the things is sending out newsletters <clears throat> to grow your client relationships. Um, if they're going to send out a newsletter once a month or they're gonna send out a newsletter every two weeks, you put it into the tasks and the schedules. You relate them back to the products that they're selling and the packages that you've created and you track them all with your key performance indicators and also your goals that you can set up in analytics and so forth. Um, and you review that on a monthly basis. And if you can get to the point where you've got all these tasks and schedules all worked out and you both agree that yes, this is going to build my business, it's gonna make more money and it's going to get me closer to my actual life goals beyond my business goals, then you sign off and both parties then have a clear path to go ahead and um, develop each other's businesses. Because really that's what you're doing, it's a bit of a partnership. And the really unfortunate thing about it all is that being able to measure all of this stuff and see how successful you are, it's all about data and analyzing the data. Because if you don't do the measurements and you don't see whether you're being successful, you can't see where to improve and you can't see and you can't uh, convey to your client that paying you extra money is giving them extra money and building their business. So you've got a, uh, the number of analytics programs and so forth that are out there is quite amazing. Um, and in a business, there's lots of different areas. Um, that you have to be able to uh, measure. And a lot of that comes back to um, the research of the market, both now and in the future, and making sure that you're measuring all of the right goals in there. You've also got SEO um, that you have to have in right from the start. It comes back to your market research and working out exactly what you can do. But if you don't do that at the start, then you're gonna have to redo it all a little bit later on. So it's very important to do that type of thing right at the start. And also, once you've worked out what the different marketing channels are that they're going to go through, whether it's social, um, uh, direct promotion through email and so forth like that, you have to make sure that you've got everything optimized through all of those areas. And so apart from the really boring stuff, what it does with all of the bits and pieces and the nice pretty graphs and so forth you can get out of your analytics programs, the nice little engagement um, uh, indicators for your social media programs and so forth, 
And very, very important out of all of that is um, your accounts and having access to the accounts of your clients. Because if you've got a social media campaign or a mail out going out, you wanna see that not only do the site visitors increase through your normal analytics, you also wanna make sure you get more money. Because in the end, there's not really a lot of point if it's not coming back in. And so what we do is we get all the data together, we connect all the dots between them so that we can see what's working and what's what not working. And we compare to the program and the tasks that we set up in the at the start and whether what tasks and bits in the program are working or not working, and then we improve it. And then we do the same thing again and again and again. And the only way you can have full and clear understanding between yourself and the client is by meeting up with them. So basically what we do is, like I said, we, we try and do a monthly meeting, um, try and uh, get everyone to progress at each monthly meeting. And it's very important to have the um, key players involved in the meetings, not a manager down the line because he can't actually change anything. Um, if we've got the right setup with the data and we've done the right research at the start and put the right goals in place, um, we will see what is and isn't working online. Um, we can see what people should be spending their time and money on and what they shouldn't be spending their time and money on. Um, if you can tell your client, this isn't working, reduce your costs on that. However, this is giving you a 300% return on investment. Let's pursue that a bit more. They'll be pretty happy if you can say, well, at the end of the month, you've got a 5% increase in revenue. So when you send them the bill, they go, awesome, that's great, he's doing a great job. When, when we do do the meetings, we go back over the seven steps beforehand, and we go back over that same thing each time after their data. And we see, I mean, you might find that after you know six months, you go, oh look, the market that we're operating in now is completely different. You might redo a heap of stuff that's in there. Okay, on to the how. We've, there's certain tools of the trade. What we do, um, because we're building pretty much all of our websites in Joomla, is we try and keep everything as native to Joomla as possible. Um, the reason being is, is that if we keep everything within Joomla, a lot of the extensions and plugins and everything else like that will already be feeding in data to Joomla and will allow integration of a lot of the data that's in there. Um, sometimes we have to go outside uh, Joomla itself and use third party tools. But when we do do that, we um, do try and keep it to open source. So if there is a requirement for customizations, we can do it. And um, and if, it, if we can't even get that, well, then we make sure that we've got nice open API so then we can at least pull the um, main data that we need out of it so that the clients can see what is and isn't working. Um, currently with our clients, we're, we're sort of uh, uh, using Mojo Shop, which is a um, basically open cart in Joomla. Um, it's a nice e-commerce package and uh, actually has uh, all the functionality that's required for uh, brick and mortar um, type uh, stores goes well beyond your, your basics of just selling stuff online. Um, with that, we also use uh, MyJosef, which is a, um, a search engine optimization plugin that has a whole heap of functionalities to optimize a website as far as SEO is concerned. And then there's MyJo Analytics, which is um, uh, open analytics uh, within Joomla, which is a bit like Google Analytics, but Google Analytics at the moment seems to be suffering a fair bit uh, by not actually collecting data. Um, I think uh, on average there's about 20 to 25% of a website's traffic that doesn't get reported, which is a bit of an issue. And um, it goes up and down from month to month. And one of the good things about MyJo Analytics is that um, <coughs> because it's 
from the same company that does the, the shop and so forth, it automatically optimizes all of the e-commerce side of things. And all your, um, uh, we also use AC mailing for most of our uh, email stuff off the server. And um, what you can do is do, put all your campaign codes and uh, click through codes and so forth into it. And it'll actually show you the, the uh, integrated um, report of how much you sold in your shop, when you sent out your email campaign, how many people click through, how many people actually bought the product, and also the path through the website and where people did or didn't actually lead to a conversion. Um, so, I mean, but really, there, there's so many extensions and products out there that you can use, but as long as you're getting all of the data, um, that's the main thing, that you can report it back to your client in nice pretty graphs, the way that Google, you know, Google Analytics and so forth does. And when you're doing that, you can say, you sent this email that's on our program, you had a spike in sales of that product that was clicked through from that campaign, and your return on investment for that campaign when you spent an hour doing up your email was a 40% spike in sales of that product or that category. If you're doing that for your client, they're gonna be really, really happy with you. Really, really happy, giving them more money, getting them closer towards their life goals, um, getting them to be able to work on their business instead of in their business on a day-to-day -day thing, then they'll engage you for a long period of time and they'll, because they can see the longer that, the longer that you're working with them, the closer they can get to these things. The other big benefit of this is if you've got really happy clients, you're making them more money, you're coaching them through all of this stuff, you end up, in, end up getting referrals from them because they're really happy. Probably not in the same industry they're working in, but <laughs> their friends that are working in different industries, they'll definitely be referring you to because they can see that, yes, this is a program that works and you've become, you know, close to them and been working with them for a long time and they want their friends to benefit from their friends that are helping them on the websites. One of the things that as you're going through and you're doing this on their business as well is you're keeping in the back the end goal of what their personal passions are and their personal goals in life. And so as you're developing and you're getting more success in all of those things, you're actually leveraging that to then enable them to go out and do their personal goals as well. It's like spending more time with their friends who they've referred to you, who are now more successful and also have more spare time to go out and have fun. And that's about it. Does it yeah, questions? Did I, fit, I fitted it in the half hour, that was good. Good man. Yeah. Do you have other people that you work with that do work for you? Yes, yeah. Um, I mean, my my personal point of view is that um, you don't have to be a giant web agency with heaps of staff that work um, in an office somewhere. Um, if you have good contacts out through the industry, family, friends, and so forth, that are specialised in their different areas, then you want to utilise that as much as possible. Um, I mean, if I've, I've got friends who are professional coaches, so that you know, if we've got a large client that you know uh, requires more specialised attention and more experienced attention, you know, um, she might charge five hundred dollars an hour, but you know, if it ends to leads to a really good outcome, um, that's well worth it. If you've got people who are specialised in project management or cataloguing or um, uh, co copywriting or graphic design, um, you've got all of those people that you can use on a regular basis. Um, and as you're doing more of this and you find out more information, 
um, and, and, and client requirements might get wider and, and larger in scope, going out and using those people is, is the way to go. And if you've got, and, and really, because what you're doing is you're building the relationship with the client, not just the client's clients, you're building the relationship with them. So the easiest thing is just say, look, if there's something that you don't know about, or you say, look, you know, I think we can do better with that if I go off and do a little bit of research on it, just say, look, we've identified that this is what we want to do and what we have to do. I'm going to go and do a bit of research and get back to you. Because an initial, uh, the initial meeting with the client is seeing if they're interest, you know, what they're interested in, whether it's just a website, whether they want to get some coaching, whether they just want help with, um, you know, say their newsletters or, or their social campaigns. And they'll say, look, we, you know, we can only do one hour a week on this, but we realize that it's going to take more than that. So you set up a, um, a notification on uh, Twitter feed or something for, for their account, and it'll pop up on someone's, on your computer or whoever's computer, and they'll reply for them. And all of a sudden, they don't have to worry about that anymore. And they're looking after their customers in the meantime. Um, and the same thing with your, with your email campaigns or your newsletters and so forth. Um, I've got a client that they send out, uh, they send out a newsletter every three weeks. Every second one, we do for them. You know, so they only have to do something once every six weeks. And I'll send them a reminder when the other one comes up and, and I'll say, what are we sending a newsletter about? And they say, oh, we've got this product and this product we have to sell. So I just bring up the newsletter template, stick them in there, send it off to them for a proof. They go, yeah, that's fine. It takes them five minutes. They're quite happy with that because they don't have to do it. You know, and not everyone wants to spend lots of money every month, but they're quite happy to be helped out if they can see an end benefit. And that's really what it's about. I mean, recommending a client spend an extra $500 a month with you for something when that's not the gain that they're going to get out of it is not a good idea. You want to say, look, how much extra money can we make from doing this? And then from there you say, well, this is how much we should engage with you. Yeah. That was a very good one. Yeah. Well, uh, Norm had his hand up before. Yeah. Um, I, 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 yeah, I put that in the um, in the second biggest circle that I had up before of research. Um, you go into uh, your keyword um, research tool or what, what, Google keyword tool, and you say there is nobody in the world searching on this as far as Google's concerned. Therefore, it's a bad idea. <laughs> um, you can't say it's a hundred percent bad idea, but I mean, it is, you just have to tell them it might not be great because no one's looking for it. So why are you doing this as an online business? Maybe offline is a better way to approach it. Yeah, just a quick one. Depends on the size of the client. Um, the more detailed the statistics are that you can bring up in a report, um, the more customization with their systems and bringing it in. If you can get things that are nicely integrated, like the stuff I was talking about before, um, you can get a lot of that just straight out. Um, you can go to most of your accounting packages and, and print off a little graph of daily sales for the month. And you can go, and then you get your graph of when your emails went out, and then you've got your graph of when your traffic is, and you stick three or four of those things together, and you can go, well, this is good, that's not good. Yeah, yeah, and 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 depending on how broken down you've got your email lists and your and your and your social marketing, um, depends on how far you can break that out down into market segments and and products and so forth. Um, the, you can go forever with data analysis. Um, yeah. I I I base it on um, what your KPIs are. 
what your KPIs are. Does everyone know about goals in Google Analytics and stuff, where you, where you can set an end goal? No, yeah, yeah. So if 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 you if you right at the start when you say these are our uh, these are what we're going to use as our performance indicators if we're successful, we'll see this. Um, when we've got a conversion, whether it's a sign up for a newsletter or whether it's a, uh, a subscription to a mailing or whether it's buying a product and getting to the checkout screen, they're all goals that you set up. And so if you've got those goals in there, um, if you move back from there, um, you can always drill backwards and take it as far as you want. Um, but most clients, as long uh, uh, most clients, your default screens that you've got for your yeah, analytics and and your accounting and stuff, that gives you most of the information. You can go back to you know from the accounts you think can then go back um, you know percentage profit per item, um, what your cost of sale is uh, on on your accounting side of it, as opposed to your cost of sale online and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, depends on how how far they want to get and how much data they're going to give you from their accounting package. Because <laughs> some people are, are, are pretty precious about that type of thing. Yeah. Good one. Yeah. I'll tell you what, um, mm. there might be a couple more questions out there. Are you going for mm. drinks afterwards? Definitely. You guys can catch up afterwards with Max if you've got some more questions. I'm afraid mm. we have to finish now because we have to be out by five. <laughs> but thank you so much. Yeah. That's right.